Do you want to know how to embed and integrate a piece of real website into your prototype in the Figma? For example, how you can integrate a Google map into your prototype? Get sure to watch this video until the end. My name is Kia and here is the Kimo. Welcome to another episode of the Kimo Lab. A while ago, I installed the Anima plugin on my Figma. And to be honest, at the beginning, I really got shocked. I didn't expect this much cool features all in one plugin. I had experience using the Anima in the sketch, but this is a totally different thing. In this video, I'm going to work on two case study to show how this plugin is working. In the both case studies, we are going to use the same techniques, which is actually embedding piece of code into our prototype. In the first case study, I'm going to integrate a Google map into my prototype. In the second case study, I'm gonna actually integrate 3D model uh, that user can actually interact and again zoom in, zoom back, and also rotate the object. All of them in the Figma. But before I go further in this process, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos as well. Now, without further ado, let's get started. I prepared a simple user interface uh, that I'm going to add the Google Map into it. I'm not going to focus on how to create this prototype, so feel free to use anything that you want. In the first step, I'm going to run the Anima plugin. If you don't have it on your Figma, you can install it so easy. You can find it from the Figma community. Then I'm going to select the frame that I want to show the map inside it and then click on the embed code. Now I open the Google map and open the sharing panel by clicking on the share icon and then go to the embed a map tab and copy the HTML. Now I'm going to paste it into my Anima plugin. The only thing that you need to consider is that you need to define the size of iframe manually based on the frame that you want to show the map on it. If you don't do that, then uh, the size of the iframe will be bigger in your prototype. Now it's time to save it and then run the preview. When you run the preview, you can see that the map is there, but the prototype is not working pretty well. I don't know what is the reason here. I don't know, it can be just a bug, but when I synchronize uh, this prototype with my project and then I open the project in the browser, then the preview actually works better and more correctly. So you can see now when I click on the more, I have the uh, whole animations and transitions in the page and also the map is working and I can interact with it easily, zoom in, zoom out or move the map around. Spline is really easy to use. You just open the website and then open an app. And then click on the new file. And then you will land in the project environment. You can model your 3D model here. You can actually add the interactions. Uh, you can add animations and then run your, uh, let's say, uh, design and interact with it. In this video, I'm not going to cover the spline tool in detail, so let's remove the file that we made and let's try to find uh, another pre, uh, predefined and pre-designed project from the library. I'm going to use this 3D model of the t-shirt um, in this project. All I'm doing to do is just open the project and then select the object. I double click on it and select the last layer, which is a t-shirt. Then from the material panel, I select the t-shirt material and then I click on the image and upload the image that I want to show. But as you can see, the logo is not uh, ready in the correct proportion. So I need to just scale it down in the vertical axis and fix its look. Now I run the preview by clicking on the play button on top. And as you can see, we can rotate the object around. We can zoom in and zoom out, but um, we do not have really complex interaction. In the next step, I uh, click on the export button and copy the tags in front of the embed label. Now let's get back to the Figma. I'm gonna create a new frame. Now I'm gonna create a rectangle that I'm going to actually show the uh, 3D model that we prepared in the spline in it. In the next step, I try to just add more user interface elements like a text or the logo in order to just give more realistic feeling or create more real uh, user interface component. Now my basic user interface elements are ready, so I'm gonna open the Anima plugin again. Then I'm going to select the rectangle that we made and click on the embedded code and then paste the code actually we copy from this plugin and then click on the save and see the preview. 
In the preview, you can see that we have all the user interface element that we add to the scene. And also we have the 3D model that we made. Now I synchronize it with the project to open it in the browser, which would be less uh, buggier based on my experience. That's not all. In Anima, you have the possibility to switch between code and the prototype and also the comment section. In the code section, you can uh, select any UI element in your uh, scene and see what is the code behind it, the HTML, CSS, and the JavaScript. When you switch to the comment section, uh, you can select any user interface element on the prototype and leave a comment for it. That's going to really be helpful when you are working with other designers or with the stakeholders or product owners uh, when you want to actually collect the feedback from everyone that might ease the job and save a lot of time from you. So as you can see here, for example, I select the headline and I just leave some comment for it. At the end, I have to say that I found a lot of other cool features in the Anima that you can use in order to create more realistic prototypes in the Figma. The other features like uh, defining the breaking point for having responsive layout, using predefined library and add uh, the user interface elements directly from library into your uh, prototype, uh, which will make your job much easier instead of uh, actually starting to design from the scratch. And many other cool features, maybe in the next video I try to cover other features as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and please subscribe to my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.